This is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Gavita lighting systems. First we'll look at the double-ended 600-750s and then we'll look at the 1000 watt, both of which are in the E-series. So when we talk about Gavita lighting, we're really talking about efficiency. Efficiency is really their motto. Um, they come from the Netherlands where they run huge greenhouses full of tomatoes and all a bunch of other stuff. They're pretty much the uh, aficionado when it comes to uh, greenhouses from 20,000 to 40,000 fixtures, not watts, fixtures, which is just mind boggling. Um, so they have to be super effective. They can't be constantly messing with the reflectors. They can't be constantly changing out bulbs. Um, things are designed to be very durable, very efficient, and run at a very high efficiency. Um, now keep in mind when you're growing tomatoes, it's not a huge cash crop. You need to be very efficient to make money off growing tomatoes. You know, if you lose a couple percent per fixture over a 40,000 light, fix, uh, 40, light you know, greenhouse, you pretty much have squandered your profits at that point. Um, so you can guarantee that these are some of the most efficient lighting systems on the market to date. Um, first up, we'll, we'll talk about efficiency is the double-ended lamps. Single-ended lamps have a couple issues with them. First, there's a wire frame inside them holding the filament tube in place, which basically cuts down on efficiency. You know, they're running at 95% efficiency off the bat because of that. Um, on top of it, they're only connected on one end, which means they're usually off-centered inside the reflector, which is not ideal. Um, and then uh, last but not least, that big that you know, metal halite bulbs can create sag on your socket, which can create awkward reflection, which is not efficient. Also puts stress on the bulb, stress on the socket, which is not ideal. Um, so double-ended lamps connect on both ends versus one end, so they run at about 100% efficiency off the bat. Um, they fire the gas from both ends, which is much more efficient, um, which gives you a higher PAR output, which is basically the level that plants can read, a light that plants can absorb. Um, so it's very important to have very high PAR levels. Um, that's kind of the name of the game. So they have higher PAR levels because of the double-ended uh, connection. Um, they also have higher UV content. Um, so all around the double-ended bulbs, um, they're also centered inside the center of the reflector, which is much more efficient, and it's going to also increase the, uh, the output. So, you know, double-ended versus single-ended, there's always going to be a reason to use single-ended. If you're in an apartment, a small ceiling, low ceiling, super hot little corner of a room, it probably doesn't make sense to use double-ended stuff. But if you're upgrading or if you are uh, building a new environment, a new spot, this is a, a really great way to go. Um, they do create a little bit more heat. Let's just say a thousand watt creates, uh, an air-cooled thousand watt, let's say it creates uh, safely 35 to 400, uh, sorry, 35 to 4,000 BTUs um, of heat that you need to offset with the air conditioner. If you were running the non-air cooled, you're probably looking at 4,000 to 4,500 max. Um, so you're adding a little bit of heat to your room, but you're getting more of your light that you're paying for out of that bulb. Um, we're both paying the same bill, but you're getting more out of that bulb than if you were running it air-cooled. Um, so part of that is because of the glass in the bottom of the reflector. Um, glass is like a filter. If it gets scratched up or dusty or in any way, shape, or form, it's going to diffuse that light coming off the bulb that you're paying that top dollar to run. Um, all the way up to 10% lost light. Um, that could be on an old reflector that's been wiped prop improperly, scratched the glass all up, and there's dust on it. A lot of times when people are air cooling their lights, they're also drawing air from a dirty, dusty basement or from a warehouse space or from outside. Within no time, there's a film of dust on top. They're not cleaning it. They're losing anywhere from 5 to 10% of their light. That's going to you know, equal some percentage of yield. It's also, on an ecological level, a kind of unfriendly, you know, 10% less efficient just for the sake of being lazy is not great either. So if it's not benefiting you in a big way, it's a really good idea to think about going to non-air-cooled lights. It would take a little bit bigger air conditioner, but you'd be being more efficient with your carbon footprint and also getting more for your money that you're already paying. Um, so between the reflector... I'm oh, sorry, between the, uh, the glass and the bulb, we're already talking anywhere from 7 to, you know, all the way up to 13, 15% more efficient, depending on what you have got going on with your, your light. Um, and then last but not least, the aluminum inside the reflector is so important. Um, it's something that gets set aside completely in the United States, and uh, aluminum degrades at a pretty standard rate of anywhere from 2 to 5% per year. Um, that happens from dust, from dirt, and also from the intense light and the intense heat of these high output bulbs. Um, so if you've got a reflector that's running three, five, six years old, we're talking, you know, two to five percent per year times three or five years is a big hit on each light, especially if you're running a large garden. Um, now, uh, you can 
do a couple things. You can try to clean those lights, but if you're not careful, you'll end up scratching that aluminum worse and you'll end up making it even more of a problem. Um, the proper thing to do is swap those reflectors out anywhere from every two all the way up to, we'll say max, probably four years maximum. Um, and when you, you might not believe that, but let's talk about how the light gets from the bulb to the plant. Only 40% of the light that comes off of that bulb is going to that plant directly. It's called direct light. So that would leave 60% over half of that light that you're paying for to, has, is completely dependent on how good, how clean your reflective material, your aluminum is at that moment. That is you know, more important than pretty much anything else in your garden. How clean is your aluminum? How good is your reflector? Now, if you're running these big Magnum XLs, the concept of swapping those out every two, three, four years, it's scary. Um, when you're running these Gavita style fixtures, because they have thought about that already and they knew they were gonna have to swap those aluminum reflectors out on a regular basis, they made theirs interchangeable. Very simple, very simple idea, very uh, good idea, and it works amazing. We're talking pop it out, pop a brand new piece of aluminum in for upwards of 30 bucks at most. That is so simple to do and so cheap that you just really can't beat it. Um, so with double-ended lamps, they also have the extended life. Um, we're talking that, you know, at the end of a year, you're probably looking at 95% of your efficiency out of your 1,000-watt double-ended versus at the end of a single-ended, uh, you know, lifespan at the end of a year, you'd be lucky to be running probably 80% efficiency out of that bulb if you're running it for an entire year, which, once again, is a complete waste of your time and energy to be spending all that money to get that little of your light out of your bulb. So if you can replace your bulb only once a year and swap your aluminum out once every year to two years, and that alone increases your efficiency slash output by five to 10%, it's a no brainer. And it's hard to do that with other systems. In this system, it was previously thought of and, uh, and they made it super simple to do. So off the bat, you have five to 10% on your glass, three to 5% on your bulb, and anywhere from two to 5% on your reflector. Add those all up and we're talking 15 to 20% more light coming out of this reflector than a dirty, air-cooled, old reflector with a bad bulb in it. Now, I'm sure not everybody's doing that, but in between there, everybody seems to fall. And last but not least, these bulbs have air, the, the proper temperatures they need to run at. And this is something that a lot of people don't talk about, but if you're running single-ended bulbs, and it's being air cooled, what temperature is the air that's coming through that reflector? If you're running in super cold environments in a cold weather state and you're pulling super cold air from outside and running it through your lights, that cooler temperature will actually make that ball burn improperly. It won't give the right perspective and it won't get up to full power and it won't burn properly. They have optimal operating temperatures and if you're cooling your reflector, if you're cooling your bulb improperly, you're even hurting yourself even further. So keep that in mind when you're picking out a next light if you're going to run air-cooled, it has to be, in my opinion, a very specific purpose. Otherwise, non-air-cooled, non-vented makes the most sense when it comes to efficiency and getting the most bang for your buck, which is what we're all looking for. So once we've gotten past the efficiency and why that's so great, um, next we'll talk about the lamps themselves and what they have put in there to make their plants grow now that they've got such an efficient system. The lamps themselves um, are hard to beat. Um, they're what is considered a low production horticultural lamp. Um, now you look at some of these cheaper bulbs and you think, oh, they're doing the same thing. Those cheaper bulbs, that price is a direct reflection on where that bulb was made. It was mostly made by what would be considered general lighting companies, companies that make a ton of different bulbs for a ton of different purposes, not lamps for plants. That's Gavita's motto, lamps for plants a horticultural light bulb for plants that takes more time to make, more R&D, and it's gonna cost a little bit more money, but it's going to pay back itself in the long run. So when we talk about lighting, we're talking about, especially inside of a, a production greenhouse, we want yield, the plain and simple yield, and then we also want quality, but yield is pretty much the most important thing. The way that we get yield in this scenario is through photons. Um, on a super basic, simple level, photosynthesis can be broken down to, you know, this is obviously not as only thing is happening, but as at a very simple level, we can say eight to 10 photons to create, to make one CO2 molecule go into plant sugar, um, which the plant eats and turns into actual tissue. So on a very basic level, more photons, more yield. It's that simple. Um, and because of the way this reflector and this ballast and this light system are set up, it gives you some insane amounts of photons. Um, now, photons aren't impossible to create. Anybody can make them. They're actually pretty easily to grab from red spectrum, which is why 
cheap bulbs will have high photon counts, maybe even close to as high photons as Kavita's, but the spectrum of that bulb will be so red that you'll end up with an extremely leggy, stringy plant, which is not going to help you in the long run. Gavita, because it's been around for so long, has taken the time to pull photons from blue, from yellow, from green, and then also from the easily you know, available red and orange spectrum. So that's why their bulbs are superior and they're also going to be better for vegging under. A lot of people veg under metal halide and then go to HPS. These bulbs can absolutely be vegged under because they have a very high quality spectrum. You don't see the issue with you know, little skinny stems that everybody complains about vegging under HPS when you run these bulbs. Um, so these are great for veg and they're also great for flower. Um, once again, super high photon levels, which equals bigger yields, hands down. Um, and then keep in mind that you know, spectrum does not equal yield. Spectrum equals quality. And because they have a great spectrum, you also get great quality out of their lights too. The UV coming from the fact that there's no glass blocking it out increases oil resin, turpin profile, which is uh, accountable for smell and flavor. Um, and, and also, like we said, yield is going to be increased automatically. Um, the last thing we have to worry about um, is how to control these things. Um, and so the way they control them is very innovative. And um, basically, you know, if you've run lights before, you're going to be connecting them to a power supply. The power supply is basically going to have some sort of timer on it. Well, the way they, they run their ballasts are really cool. They use the same power supply as before, but that power supply will be basically on 24-7. Um, the ballasts daisy chain together with an Ethernet cable that they provide for you. Um, all the E-Series ballasts have an Ethernet jack built into them, and we're going to just daisy chain them all together. Um, and at the end of the daisy chain, we're going to plug it into their EL1 or their EL2 controller. Um, the controller has got a lot of cool features that nobody else has really got yet. Um, and one of which is obviously, you know, is just the timer function. It turns everything on, turns everything off. But it gives you a little bit of extra there where you can have what's called a ramp up or ramp down where up to 45 minutes you can have it go up to anywhere in between there up to 45 minutes for all of your lights to come on and up to 45 minutes for all of your lights to go down to zero. Um, the EL1 can control 40 lights with this ethernet connection which is crazy because it's very small, very compact, very simple to use. And the EL2 which is the exact same size is uh, has the ability to control 80 ballasts which is just insane. So with this controller, um, you, let's say you have your 40 ballast connected to your EL1. Um, you can walk up to that controller and press the down arrow on that controller and all 40 of those ballasts will dim from 1000 to 990 to 980 to 960 as low as you want. Um, on top of that, that controller has a temperature slash photocell sensor that comes with it. And it's going to sense temperature in the room. So you want to hang that in your room and what's going to happen is um, you can set what's called an auto dim function, which nobody else really has at the moment. You can't buy that separately as a controller. So in this auto dim function, let's say you want the room to stay at 79 degrees. You would set your auto dim to 79, which basically means if it gets up to 79 and above, that controller will start dropping all of your ballast equally down in percentages, 1,990, 980, 970, to try to maintain that 79 degrees. Um, uh, which is awesome. You know, you might come back and your ballast might be all dimmed down, but your temperatures are where you need to be, let's say if your air conditioner cut out or is working at half capacity, uh, which is a huge safety net that, you know, like I said, you can't really buy anywhere else. Um, secondly, inside that same controller, you're allowed to set what's called, you know, an auto shutoff or a high temp shutoff, where if I have my ideal temp at 79, but my high temp degrees, let's say it's at 89, if it gets up to 89 degrees, even though it's been dimming and dimming and dimming, let's say my air conditioner completely quit on me um, and it gets up to 89, it will just turn all the lights off. So it's also somewhat of an insurance policy in itself. Um, on top of that, um, the, the EL2, like I said, can run about 80 ballast. Um, it also has a couple jacks that you can plug what's called the EC1 and the EC2 into, which will allow you to control a couple extra alternative devices. Um, so it's a really versatile little controller that just does things that nobody else can do. Once again, on the sunrise and sunset, or the sun, sun up or sundown, or ramp up, ramp down, whatever you want to call it, um, the, a, a couple of cool benefits about that that you, know, you might not think off the bat. Um, one on the back end, when it cools down at night, when your lights turn off all at the same time, you really get that big humidity jump. Um, if it takes all the way up to 45 minutes for all those lights to come down to zero, 
you're going to really save yourself on some of that humidity spike. Um, so that's something that you might not think about. Also on the end of it, on the harvesting and ripening side, it helps trigger ripening and trigger harvesting with that replication of sunrise, sunset. And on the front end, um, plants don't take up a ton of light in that first hour. So, you know, using full speed light on your plants in that first hour, once again, is not really efficient. Um, so having it ramp up to 45 minutes can save you on your electric bill over the course of the year, as well as help the plants gently trigger into their light cycle every day um, and uh, helps also with flowering. Um, so the controller does a lot. Um, the ballast themselves and the reflectors themselves are really unmatched. Um, extremely high power outputs, extremely high uh, productivity, really efficient, uh, super simple to hang up and control, um, really just a game changer. Um, we're on board 100% here at 4 Hydroponics. Had absolutely nothing but great feedback, a bunch of great stories about, you know, best crops ever, and uh, I can't see anything uh, wrong with these guys, just nothing but good things to say about them. Um, they're available on our website through 4 um, I hope this video helped you out, cleared up some stuff about Gavita Lighting, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.